Welcome everyone to this Kairos conversation with Leah Reeser Keller, and uh, I will be your host, Shannon Newfelt. And um, this is in the time slot that the Kairos volunteers meet for a leadership seminar once a month. And we have decided for this particular conversation to give the wider community uh, an update that we would open it up to everyone. So all are welcome. So glad you're here and uh, or listening afterwards. And we're going to begin with a land acknowledgement. At a recent staff retreat, we were asked to make a personal land acknowledgement. And so I am going to share my personal land acknowledgement tonight. I acknowledge the land, the rocks, the loam, the peat, the sand, all the soils. I acknowledge the water moving in rivers and aquifers, mighty oceans and tiny droplets. I acknowledge the air we breathe, our atmosphere held by Earth's gravity with just the perfect amount of oxygen. Without any one of these, there would be no life. I acknowledge the plants and animals that share the gifts of land, water, and air, our elder brothers who can show us how to live in balance. I acknowledge the first peoples of this land who knew the lessons of the land and water, plants and animals of Turtle Island long before my ancestors came here. In particular, I acknowledge the young Chippewayan First Nation who listened to the buffalo for millennia before my ancestors settled on the banks of the Omakati in Blackfoot or in Cree, Kasisasuan, swift flowing river, that river that I grew up calling the North Saskatchewan River. I acknowledge the treaties, Treaty 6 where my parents were born, Treaty 4 where I was born, and Treaty 13 where I live now. I'm clearly an inheritor of these treaties, but the two row wampum belt and the dish with one spoon wampum belt speak to me more strongly than the Canadian government's broken treaties. The wampum belts teach me about living in relationship, reciprocity and respect. I acknowledge the people who are in relationship with this land where I sit today, the Huron-Wendat, Patoon, Seneca, and Mississaugas of the Credit, all my relations. And I would also invite you to join me as you are comfortable in listening to an opening prayer. We come to you, O oh God, our river of life. May we drink deeply and receive your grace. We come to you, O oh God, our rock of ages. May we stand in trust and receive your strength. We come to you, O oh God, our source of compassion. May we open our hearts and receive your healing love. Amen. Welcome again for any who might have joined us uh, to this Kairos conversation with Leah. And so now it is my pleasure to introduce Leah Reeser Keller, who is the Transitional Executive Director at Kairos. And we um, welcome you into this space, Leah. And um, without further ado, I'm going to um, invite you to uh, speak to the group, and if you want to start with saying a little bit more about who you are and where you come to us from, I would welcome that. Thank you, Shannon. And it's good to see all of you, uh, to see names and faces. Some of you I've uh, had the honor of meeting, and some of you I haven't met yet until this call. 
but I can see and, and I heard from my colleagues from Fahira who's on this call and Shannon that this is a crew of champions uh, for Kairos over the years who have contributed to its legacy in so many ways. So I am very new to this journey of walking with Kairos. I joined uh, last September, so it's not it's not quite been a year yet that I've been with Kairos. And what blows me away is the depth of connections and relationships, you know, the history of coalitions, of organizing, of connecting. And there's still new connections, new partnerships that are being formed as this organization evolves in community, in new ways, adapting to the times that we're in. And one of the things that, that has been very clear to me is that Kairos has been able to adapt and change as it has, thanks to the strong foundation of the many people, including many of yourselves on this call, who have been faithful supporters, who have, have had Kairos' back for this work that we do together. Even as we're learning and growing and trying our best to act with good intention uh, as we learn more about who we are and who we are in relationship to each other. Um, I am going to share a short presentation just with an overview of some of what is going on around Kairos these days. So much is happening that, you know, as soon as I kind of put one collection of highlights together, it's already out of date because more things are happening and more exciting things. So this is some of the exciting things. But if I forget something that you know about, uh, feel free to remind us all as well. And I will leave time for questions at the end. Um, my colleagues on this call, um, Shona Fulter, who's our operations director at Kairos, um, Fahira Golic, who is our donor relations coordinator, and Shannon, I think many of you know Shannon Neufeld, our members and networks uh, coordinator, are going to be very active in the chat as I speak, giving you more information and more connection. So I might touch on something and they'll share like a link where you can learn more about it. Uh, or maybe even a link where you can uh, sign up to take action on one of our current campaigns or take part in a Gaza ceasefire pilgrimage walk um, and more. And I encourage you as well, you can put your own uh, comments and thoughts in the chat as we go to. And maybe as I get my PowerPoint set up, I would invite you to write into the chat tonight a word that says, uh, what, what brought you here? Why have you been uh, such a, why have you been so connected to Kairos and invested in it over the years? And I will answer this first question up front of what does transitional executive director mean? It means that I am walking with Kairos on this journey for this time while Kairos is moving through some structural transitions. And I'll get more into that as well later, but it means that I am here for this specific time focusing on some of these pieces in transition, building this, strengthening the foundation for the next steps for Kairos. So I'm going to get my PowerPoint uh, going, so bear with me, but yeah, please do take a minute to write in the chat um, a word about what brought you here tonight and what has kept you connected with Kairos. So I hope this is showing up for you now. I always find Zoom a little bit disorienting when uh, I know you're there, but I can't see you. So hopefully all, all these windows are showing up and we're good. Okay, thank you. So as I said, this is just an overview of some of the exciting things that are happening at Kairos this year uh, in 2024. So one of the first pieces, and I mentioned this, this is related to my title of transitional executive director. 
is that Kairos is moving into a new administrative structure. This is not about the programming. This is about uh, the, we can call this the organizational structure or foundation underneath. So most of you will know that right now Kairos is, it's a, a social venture of 10 different member churches and organizations that is housed within United Church of Canada. So Kairos is uh, charitable status. If you've ever donated to Kairos, as I know many of you have on this call, your tax receipt comes from United Church of Canada. And so that is the, the structure. And for many years that has served Kairos very well to have that kind of administrative structure and support. And one of the things that's changing is as Kairos has grown and evolved, um, Kairos is changing to become an independent charity. So it will have its own charitable registration. And right now, Kairos has a steering committee that oversees the, all of the programming and the structure, while um, United Church of Canada continues to hold a, a governance function, you know, um, high level oversight of finance and HR. So Kairos, this doesn't change the programs, but it changes that Kairos would be its own independent nonprofit. And one of the reasons that this is happening is that it will open the door to some new funding opportunities for Kairos because uh, it will be clear that Kairos is a, a small to medium sized nonprofit and does not operate with the budget of United Church of Canada. And for some grant opportunities, um, there are limitations when it looks like United Church of Canada is applying to a grant, for example, from uh, Global Affairs Canada, when actually Kairos itself is a, is a much smaller kind of independent entity. So this will more clearly reflect who Kairos is and how Kairos operates. And it also sets Kairos up to be more flexible and adaptable as things change in Canada, as the nature of churches and church denominations and priorities change. But one of the things that's been very important in this whole journey is that maintaining and strengthening ties to Kairos's ecumenical membership is key. So this has been a process of um, representatives from Kairos's member churches and agencies coming together to develop the new bylaws, the new structure for the organization, um, putting in place the people who will be the the first board of directors setting up this new organization well uh, so something that's important to be clear is that this is a like a mutually discerned next step <laughs> excuse me um and it is clear that this from all sides that this has been about finding good ways to walk together uh, where kairos will be able to uh, reach out to new opportunities and potentially connect with new constituencies while at the same time uh, maintaining very strong relationships uh, with its founding members. And so in the meantime, these folks on screen, you might recognize a few of them. This is from a recent staff retreat, staff and steering committee retreat that we had in Toronto in 2024. So these are just some of the folks behind the scenes who helped to make this exciting work that Kairos is involved in happen. Many of you here tonight, I think, are very curious to know what is happening with the Kairos blanket exercise. This has been a very significant program across Kairos for many years, and it went through a period of pause and reassessment to make sure that how the blanket exercise is operating and structured and that Kairos's relationship to it is in line with our commitments to Indigenous rights and justice and to be doing this in a good way. And it has not been easy. I think there are many different experiences and perspectives of the right way to go. But one of the things that I have seen is that the team that I work with at Kairos, those around who have been working on restructuring this, have been going slowly with intention and 
um, at the core of it is working to have the KBE centered around Indigenous peoples telling Indigenous stories. And so Kairos is moving to be a background support. And the blanket exercise itself will be delivered all through a partnership model uh, where independent consultants and um, organizations, other kinds of partners can have like universities or government organizations can have partnership agreements with Kairos. And Kairos's role will be maintaining the materials. We will be working with an indigenous advisory circle to um, make sure that we are um, going about it in a good way to update materials, to have ongoing input and connection into how the, the program is happening. And Kairos will be providing um, database and other administrative support to strengthen and provide the materials and provide training. But the exercise itself will be delivered through partners who will set their own rates and collect their own fees. And one of the changes as well is that all, um, all lead facilitators for the KBE exercise, and there's usually two facilitators, a lead facilitator um, and a person in the settler role who is a, a secondary facilitator, all lead facilitators must themselves be Indigenous. And so this is focusing on ensuring that um, it is centering Indigenous voices and how the blanket exercise is delivered. Another uh, key thing to note uh, when we talk about Kairos um, entering into partnership agreements for offering the blanket exercise. Um, in some cases, when it's uh, universities or church denominations or service agencies, um, there will be a licensing fee for the use of the materials and for the ongoing updates, as well as costs for training. Um, for organizations or independent consultants who are Indigenous, the licensing fee of the material will be waived. And some of that means that the costs for licensing the material will be higher for non-Indigenous partners, but that's an important part of doing this in a good way as well. So it is in multiple ways uh, shifting the how the Kairos blanket exercise happens uh, to center Indigenous voices and Indigenous businesses and consultants. And uh, I'll one more note on that. It, it has been a long process of trying to develop this and of thinking about what kinds of internal changes that will mean at Kairos in terms of how we staff this, because Kairos staff will not be delivering blanket exercises anymore. Kairos staff will be managing partnerships and updating scripts and doing more of the behind the scenes work. So that's also meant that we need to um, to create and hire some new roles. One of those exciting roles is that we are hiring a manager of Indigenous programs and uh, the manager, we are in the, the final stages, we are very excited to be moving forward soon um, to have a person who is Indigenous in the position of manager for um, all programs related to Indigenous rights and justice across Kairos. And so that also means as well that we are bringing energy to our Indigenous rights programming um, because our Indigenous rights coordinator role has been vacant for, for a while now. Um, our Kairos Indigenous Rights Circle is made up of passionate individuals who continue to, uh, to work and learn. They recently met together in Nova Scotia on Mi'kmaq territory. And we're excited to see this work grow as well because we have work to get back to and we're excited to be setting up the foundations to uh, move forward again um, where Kairos as a, a settler origin organization is able to work um, more collaborat collaboratively and with more clear leadership from Indigenous people in leading this work within Kairos and in the community. Uh, another program that is 
on the move is migrant justice and pictured here is Leah Schiffera. Um, we sometimes call her Leah number one because she started at Kairos a few weeks before I did. So I'm Leah number two uh, on the staff team. And Barbara Manguende, who's our director of programs at Kairos, are pictured here at the fall consultation of Canadian Council for Refugees. Um, Leah and Barbara have been working to revitalize Kairos's migrant justice work, uh, rebuilding connections and looking at uh, the next steps of how Kairos and its networks can um, increase advocacy for migrant workers in particular. Uh, so some exciting work is happening and I, I hope in the chat that you're able to put a link to um, some current advocacy because even this week there is a big push on the federal government related to uh, undocumented workers and regularizing people who are living uh, without papers, who are in a very difficult situation. A big focus of our migrant justice advocacy as well is related to the rights and treatment of people who are on temporary worker visas, who are often in very difficult situations where their human rights uh, can be compromised. So Leah is leading this incredible work and it's it feels like there's a lot of new um, opportunities on the horizon and we're excited to see where that is going. Um, migrant justice is also showing up as a key priority through many of our uh, partner groups and networks and we see a lot of potential for continuing to grow in this um, collaborative work for justice. Ecological justice also uh, has exciting things happening. And one of the programs that I want to highlight is a new project called Strengthening Voices for a Just Transition. And this is looking to bring uh, young folks in particular into conversations around advocacy where they are uh, supported and coached to speak with officials to help lead um, the work that has to happen around the shift away from fossil fuels into a future, uh, an energy future that is good for everyone. And I want to particularly highlight that we are looking for participants from Edmonton, Saskatoon, Sarnia, and Sydney. So this is an exciting nationwide opportunity. If you know young folks who are excited to be uh, climate advocates, justice advocates, encourage them to get connected. It's a it's a very exciting opportunity. And again, I can't see the comments because um, my screen is being shared, but I'm very confident there's exciting things happening with um, links where you can learn more. Um, on our global partnerships, this photo is from when our partners from South Sudan and Congo, uh, Palestine and Colombia came together in, in Toronto and elsewhere across Canada for our Women of Courage tour and an opportunity for South-South collaboration as well as advocacy work that they undertook together. So this has been a significant program over the past six years. Kairos has had funding through Global Affairs Canada uh, to make this happen. And uh, that funding it came to an end at the end of March. So as we've completed the final project reporting, it is clear that there has been a huge impact of this program. Uh, the research as, it coming, as it's coming in uh, talks about what are some of the significant changes that have happened. Um, to give you a small story that has stuck with me since I read this in a report, uh, a woman who had herself experienced domestic violence received some support and coaching through one of Kairos's partner agencies in this program as part of this. And then she, in her job working as a janitor at a hospital, interacted with a woman who had come in with injuries as a result of domestic violence. And then she counseled that woman to help her get connected to uh, survivor supports and advocacy for her situation. 
And so that that kind of um, community support that is kind of spiraling out of connection and rights and empowerment is really significant. And we have had a lot of conversations with Global Affairs Canada and with, I think we did about 11 or 12 advocacy meetings with members of parliament over this past fall, uh, looking for um, their support to find Canadian government funding again to um, move on to the next phase of this important work. And we've had very positive responses. Kairos is highly thought of and they would really like to see this work continue. And one of the challenges is, is finding the funding um, for smaller organizations like Kairos. But in the meantime, we are very grateful for all of the individuals, foundations, orders, smaller donors who continue to donate to our global partnerships solidarity work because we are still working with these partners and we are still committed to connecting to them. Um, about a week ago, I was on a, a Zoom call at 8 a.m. Uh, in my time, but with all of these partners from different parts of the world uh, reflecting on their learnings from that project and thinking about what things they can do with a very small amount of funding that we're able to offer them. And what really stood out to me on that call as people joined the Zoom call is that, you know, they're friends. They're saying, how are you doing? Good to see you. How's, you know, your mother? What's going on? And to think about this uh, connection of global advocates and justice seekers having those relationships through ways that they were able to come together with Kairos is um, is really just really heartwarming um, as well as the horrific attacks in um, in Israel and then the you know assault on Gaza has unfolded. Uh, the, the partners have continued to check in on each other and through their WhatsApp group that they developed from their visit to Canada, uh, we're sending messages of support to our partner Viam from Palestine, uh, reaching out to them uh, to offer care and concern. So it's, it's just such a powerful statement of global solidarity where it is about the relationships. Um, that have been invested in over time. And so we're grateful for all your support. Um, even small donations help make it possible for us to sustain this in bridge funding. We work on longer term opportunities to grow and strengthen this programming. And mentioning Gaza, um, I hope that you have heard already about the Gaza ceasefire pilgrimage, the Canadian Churches for Just Peace. And I say, I hope you've heard about it already because we are working to get the word out through all of Kairos member organizations and church partners who are part of this. The Gaza ceasefire pilgrimage um, is a global network of autonomous Christian groups who are coming together to stand for ceasefire, for an end to occupation, for humanitarian aid, for release of all hostages. Uh, and I'm glad I don't have to pass the test right now on what each of the five calls are. Um, I'll, I'll work on that for when I am in Ottawa with leaders from um, Kairos member churches and other partners uh, to call on the Canadian government to continue to work for a just peace. Uh, many other smaller pilgrimages have happened and are happening. If you've taken part in a pilgrimage, feel, feel free to write that in the chat or if you're going to be attending one. I know uh, there's one in Toronto planned this weekend and someone already had a question about that earlier. I saw that there's one planned in Montreal, Ottawa is planned, and I know it's already happened in Kitchener and in some other parts of Canada as well. So we're excited to be moving this forward and we've heard from our partners in Palestine and Israel that it means so much to them to see Kairos and its partners standing up for peace and to say that as people of faith and conscience we have a role to speak into this. 
Finally, I just want to say thank you again for being a champion of Kairos. You are here because you care, because you've invested your time and energy, in some cases your money, and we are very grateful. Uh, we can only do this work together, and that is the strength and power of Kairos. I would say as I meet with um, different partners, with politicians, what is really clear is that one of the unique pieces of Kairos is its network, is the people it's connected to, is, is its reach. I saw a stat today that through Kairos and its member churches and partners who are taking part in the Gaza ceasefire pilgrimage, that that is about 4 million people in Canada who are connected in that way through this network. You know, that's powerful. When we speak together, that has real impact. And as I met with politicians in Ottawa for um, politicians who are based in Ottawa, these calls were mostly on Zoom. Um, it was clear they, they respected Kairos, they had heard of Kairos, and they know that Kairos is connected to real people. And uh, some of those people are you. So I'm grateful to be here and to be walking with Kairos on these next stages of its journey. Um, and a final note that in my role as transitional executive director, I started as an interim for a short period of time and I'm now here for the next year as Kairos moves through this administrative uh, transition and develops a longer term executive director search process. So thank you. And now I'm excited to catch up on 44 new messages. Thank you so much, Leah. And yes, we have uh, a very active chat going on. Um, not very many of them were questions. There was one question early on about being federally or uh, provincially incorporated and Shona was able to uh, respond to that. Um, that. That was the one question that I noticed. If there were others, point them out to me. And if you... Um, have questions now, you could put up your hand to, to do them verbally um, or write them in the chat. And one just came in, Leah. Um, oh, now they're coming. <laughs> so first of all, <laughs> will the scripts be updated to say Indigenous instead of Aboriginal? If I could step in on that one, that actually happened quite a, uh, some time ago. So if you still have a script kicking around that says Aboriginal, that's at least five years, if not, uh, I think seven or eight years uh, out of date. Um, and we would ask you not to be using that one anymore. Um, so from Janet, a welcome, Leah. And can you say something about your new book and its topic? Sure, you know, I didn't really say much about myself and um, Maybe Shannon or Fahir or Shona, you could put a link in the chat to my bio on the Kairos website. So my background is that I have formerly worked with Mennonite Central Committee uh, in Nepal and other countries. Um, more recently, I served as executive minister for the Mennonite Church Eastern Canada Regional Church, part of the Mennonite Church Canada denomination. Um, and I am writing a book that will come out at the end of June about it always feels like a trick question. What is my book about? Living in hope in a time of climate crisis and reimagining my Anabaptist faith tradition in the context of the changing world around us. And so I, I finished the manuscript. Actually, I joined Kairos just as I was finishing the writing and editing process. And so it's um, been a great opportunity for me to, to be here and be part of Kairos and the book will actually come out into the world at the end of June. So it's about faith and leadership and culture change in the context of the climate crisis. It's called Tending Tomorrow. Thanks, Leah. Okay, do you want me to go 
on here, Shannon. I can see some yeah, yeah, comments in the ahead. chat. What will be the governing structure of the new Kairos? Um, it will have a board of directors and will be formally formally incorporated as a as a nonprofit. And I think that question was there already. Um, and so it will be a, like a classic governance structure of the board hires the executive director who hires the staff. And one of the unique things that we're developing is looking at ways to continue to have um, an advisory committee that's connected to the member partners and denominations, um, as well as looking at other ways to ensure that we're staying very connected to the constituency, to Indigenous perspectives and others as it evolves. But the at the core, the main governance piece is a governing board of independent directors uh, who are all there to act in the best interest of Kairos and, and hold that fiduciary responsibility of being board members. And the relationship Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, looking at the question, reviewing the relationship with churches and universities who are currently offering blanket exercises. So on a, a case by case basis, Kairos is working with uh, partner organizations who are have up to date training and that um, are in good standing with Kairos to be able to offer the blanket exercise. So most of the blanket exercise partnerships and relationships are paused and Kairos is currently uh, rolling out new partnership agreements, um, particularly for those who haven't had as clear a partnership agreement in the past. And so one of the changes is that um, if if you are um, looking to host a Kairos blanket exercise um, and you contact Cairo staff, Cairo staff can direct you to uh, facilitators, uh, to partners who are um, currently have active agreements and are providing that. And I would say uh, for specific questions about the Kairos blanket exercise um, and partnerships in particular, um, I would want to direct you, we have actually a specific website for the Kairos Blanket exercise that has frequently asked questions as well as um, contact information. Okay, and I trust that Fahira or someone is pulling that up for you all. Um, now there's back to the governance structure. And so I wondered, I was just gonna say, we maybe have a couple of topics. Maybe we can go back to the, the structure and and then see if there are any other structure questions before we move to a new topic. Sure. So How the first board, board the ahead. first board will be um, chosen by the, the combination of, um, so, I'll back up a little bit. So in the process of setting up this new entity, we like to call it new Kairos, um, the member churches and agencies uh, sent representatives to be on a, the new Kairos working group. And that is the group that has been tasked to develop um, bylaws and structure to work through things like how will board members be appointed? How will nominations happen? And uh, the work of that group is will go to the steering committee of Kairos, which is, it's our board that's not actually a board, but it kind of serves that purpose of a, of a board at the moment. And we say that it's a board that's not actually a board. That's because the current steering committee, many of the members on it are there because it's their job to be there, that they hold a role related to um, social justice in their, employment and so as part of that they take part in um, they sit at this kairos steering committee table um, and so they act as you know they they give oversight they hired the executive director 
but there is a dual accountability where in their employment they're accountable to their employer um, while also are there to you know support the work of kairos to happen so the shift in new kairos all the board members will be there as volunteer board members with with a duty to act in the interests of kairos it won't have like the dual accountability in the way that we have now but in the meantime the steering committee and the new kairos working group are pulling together an initial board so that the paperwork can go in and this new organization can come to life and hopefully get charitable status. We know that can take a long time. It can take about a year to actually get the charitable status. So some board members who are coming on now are signing on for a one year term. Some are signing on for a three year term so that the new board will be able to start functioning develop a nominating committee and then be able to um, to find and replace and bring on people with the breadth and depth of expertise that the board will need to lead the organization. Are there any other questions about new Kairos? Um, and um, I see there's some comments coming in. Um, in the midst of the, also the links for the blanket exercise questions were also there. Any other questions about this transition around um, the charitable status and the administrative structure at this point? Not to say you couldn't ask later if you some, think of something, but I thought it might help us to group them a little bit. And you can see the thanks there in the chat. Just curious what some of the agencies are. Um, maybe we can put a list of Kairos member organizations in the in the chat. I'm curious because I don't I think Janet Gray knows who the member organizations are. So what can you clarify that? I just thought by um the way Leah said that that maybe there were new agencies um, somehow involved or coming on board with the new board. That's all. I do know who the organizations are. Oh, That's yeah. It. We don't currently have any new agencies other than the, the members as they exist now. Uh, but we are and, and thinking about the, the structure of the new board and the organization. Um, we are are open and welcoming to other agencies or other um, church denominations, uh, to groups that share this vision and that might, um, might be a fit to join. So we are imagining a future while also knowing that our, uh, our history of connections of ecumenical relationships is our strength. And so the networks, will continue and we are looking for ways to grow and evolve uh, in new ways as well. And so I should say that the the administrative transition and some of what it means we some of it is we don't know what we don't know, but it's intended to be seamless from the perspective of the programs and the connections and the relationships. But um, something else that I want to note is that in this transition, Kairos has benefited greatly over many years from the Justice Fund, from many donations built up to support the work of Kairos over a long period of time. And that is currently held by the United Church of Canada because Kairos is under United Church of Canada. And so we are also um, working closely with with United Church of Canada in a good way around conversations about does it make more sense for that to continue to be managed by United Church of Canada with its pooled investments? Does it make more sense for us to hold that in um, a different place? But that money is is given and intended to support the work of Kairos and it will continue to do that. Um, and that has been a source of strength and stability for us and continues to be because the the challenges of 
um, funding over these last years continue to be challenging. Like many of you, inflation has had a big effect on us and our programs and as well as uh, trends in church denominations and giving. I don't know about your own communities, but that is always on everyone's mind. And so we are um, also you know, facing those struggles of adapting to challenging financial realities. And we've had, uh, we have this large uh, program gap with the global affairs funding as we're seeking to bridge that through and looking to uh, find more um, more support and connection there. So we are very, we are very grateful to have the the foresight of people who contributed to the Justice Fund um, to help support us in challenging times. Um, so there's a question. It sounds as if the churches will have no role in governance. How will they still be involved? That's a good question, and I didn't know how much detail to go into. Uh, one of the roles of the advisory committee of member organizations and churches that we're setting up is that they will have a connection to the nominating committee and will continue to not be responsible to nominate a portion of the board members. And so that is intended to, the new bylaws as they're written are intended to um, to hold us uh, together in partnership and to still have that connection, um, because that is one of our strengths is to be able to go together. How will separate incorporation status affect the proportion of advocacy that will be permitted by CRA? Thanks for that question. And I know through the history that is some of why it made more sense for Kairos to be under the umbrella of the UCC, because it makes Kairos's advocacy work kind of like a drop in the bucket compared to that. Um, at this point in time with the um, advocacy stance of CRA and of the focus of our work that is advocacy, but also public education, um, we don't anticipate that that will be a problem, but it will be something that we'll always have to monitor maybe just to add that of course there the laws on that did change a number of years ago which which gives an opening to kairos are there other other questions um Well, thank you all. And, you know, from the depth of the questions, um, it's clear that you know and have been invested in Kairos over time. Like you're asking excellent and uh, excellent good questions. Uh, we are very aware that uh, the, the federal political climate is changing and that's one of the things our advocacy um, specialist is reminding us all the time, how are we building and cultivating relationships in this new context? Uh, so that is on our minds. We know that it's not going to get easier and we're working to develop, um, you know, cross party relationships in different ways. Uh, I think one of the strengths of having this history of connection to churches is that that often can speak across political lines in a different way. And uh, I was going to say, pray for us. We're all praying for each other of uh, in our changing world. But we know that it's worth trying to do hard things. Leah, I'll note that there's a hand up. Catherine, do you have a question? Thanks. I'm. Uh not a huge fan of trying to type a bunch of stuff into a chat, uh, but I've appreciated this discussion and I've particularly noted uh, some of the kinds of questions that are coming forward. Those of us uh, who come to Kairos, I think through and as a result of and in support of uh, 
our faith affiliations uh, see Kairos as, as having, as having had, and still potentially having a fairly unique role. I mean, there's a burgeoning civil society sector uh, that that perhaps didn't exist 50 years ago when the churches did all of that. So I think the key question for us now is what is the is the the place and the space for faith related work in terms of social justice and in terms of reconciliation. And so I'm hoping that in all this new structure uh, that as the churches themselves are facing futures that look quite different than maybe what the past looked like. And for many of us that that is seen as a, not as much a challenge as an opportunity that Kairos would also see not so much that it needs to go to a bunch of other places to get the money it thinks it needs, but rather to say what can be the 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 particular the unique and and perhaps one might say the God given role of uh, that ecumenical gathering uh, to do the work of God's vision in the world and and not somehow leave that behind because there's not enough money in that anymore to do the things that Kairos has always felt it needed to do, but rather turn that and say, what, what are the things that, that, what are the ways that Kairos can be active now with what it has as its special gifts and its special calling. And, and, and I don't think that has so much to do with money as it has to do with what brings us here as people of faith. Otherwise, we could just be part of the many, 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 many civil, civil society organizations that also work toward social justice and, 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 uh, and climate uh, uh, justice and environmental sustainability and all those kinds of things. If there's something that creates a unique reality for Kairos, it's that faith-based connection. Yeah, thank you. I think that is a question that I know it's on my mind a lot and, and others, especially related to steering committee members and new Kairos working group members is this question of that, that discernment, who are we and who are we called to be and to become? And I think we, I think it's been really clear that one of the unique roles of Kairos, as you say, is a place where faith comes to bear on how we do this work and that 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 can be uh, a source of strength on our journey. To me, one of the ways that we're seeing Kairos at its best, at its heart of who it can be is in the Gaza ceasefire pilgrimages, where we are doing the advocacy work that is um, peace and justice advocacy related to this um, massive conflict. And we are doing that as people of faith. And Kairos has played a coordination role in helping to host a table of leaders from you know, our different organizations, from um, different levels, all working together to make this happen as people of faith. And it doesn't require that you have to be a person of faith to be involved in this initiative, but we're clear who we are and what we have to offer. And that's part of our witness in the world. Um, these are, this has to be part of the ongoing discernment of how do we hold on to our roots and really embrace the strengths of, of who we are and who we are becoming, being willing to change and adapt along the way as well. I could talk about that for like another hour because I, I think it's really critical and a lot of organizations are facing this, is what does it mean to be uh, faith-based but not proselytizing to to be clear about who we are and what brings us to this work and be open to you know coming alongside and hearing the perspectives of others and you know doing this work in community a community that um, we know not just christians care about this work of justice so how can we do that together owning who we are and recognizing it as a source of strength yes um, i see a question in the chat that 
I don't know how to answer this question, how we relate to green faith internationally. So I'm hoping one of my colleagues can follow up with you and I have some homework to do. I think the short answer is that we do not relate formally. Um, so there isn't uh, a, a membership. If I am not mistaken, there is there is not a membership tie with Green Faith internationally. While we would watch their campaigns and try to support um, as we are able, and so uh, certainly there is awareness and and uh, some connection there, but not a formal relationship. Well. I know our time is quickly drawing to a close here. I'm really grateful that you were willing to spend your evening here with us and we're grateful for your support. If we were sitting in a church building, I would now like pass an offering plate and say thank you for coming. Please give as the spirit leads you. We're, we're grateful. Um, so I think that might be virtually here as well. Donations are, are, are how we do this work together. Um, as well as all the ways that you share and engage and amplify and do this work of being Kairos together. So again, just thank you so much. I'm grateful that you chose to be here tonight and that you continue to uh, to walk with this movement known as Kairos. And let's take a moment to uh, acknowledge the spirit again as we close. God, you have given us a rich hour of conversation, which is just the tip of the iceberg of all the work and relationships that are going on um, behind this screen, behind uh, all of these names. I give thanks for all of the people who are attending, for all of the people who would like to be here and couldn't be here. And we ask once more your blessing on this work and then on our relationships and connections. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Go in peace. Thanks for coming all. Good night, everyone.